But there are uh, a lot of modern uh, applications where least squares is just totally, gives you a totally wrong answer. Um, because you don't expect your solution to be an energy minimizer. It, it, that, it, 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 that's not the type of, 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 of signal that, that, that you're, you're getting. Um, a typical problem, um, so suppose you have some, some discrete signal of, uh, say, a time, a time series um, of, end, of, of uh, so uh, you have, uh, say, a sound, okay, what happened here? Yeah, 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 okay. Um, maybe I disconnected that case. Um, all right. So you have some time series of, uh, of um, you know, a sound wave that you're sampling n, at n, n equally spaced times, and that gives you n real or complex numbers. Um, so that's your time series. Um, and you are measuring this by some spectral analysis. So you're taking some Fourier coefficients. So, um, so you, you, you analyze this with one frequency, C1, and you take one Fourier coefficient, and you analyze it again, take another Fourier coefficient. And so, um, if you, so we have the Fourier inversion formula, which tells you that if you take all the Fourier measurements, then you can reconstruct the solution. But suppose you only take a partial measurement. You, you, you take only m Fourier coefficients, where m is something less than n. So maybe you have a, 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 a signal of, um, of say, one, one million um, data points equally spaced. Uh, you need to take one million measurements this, at uh, one million frequencies. This is actually close to what's called the Shannon sampling theorem. Um, but suppose you, you only take 10,000. Okay, so you, you take a certain subset of measurements. Um, and then you have to say, okay, well, there's partial information. Um, if that's all you know, what's your best guess for what f is? So you can apply these squares. Um, and it's, um, it's a classical exercise in Fourier analysis to see what you get. If you apply least squares, um, the least square solution, what, so you, you, you know some Fourier coefficients, and you don't know the others, but if you want to minimize the energy, what you should do is you should send all the other Fourier coefficients to zero. Um, and so the least squares uh, solution to the problem of reconstructing a, a, a time series from a partial Fourier uh, measurement is to just take a partial Fourier series where you, you, you only keep the frequencies that you measure and you just assume that all other frequencies are zero. And that is the least squares. Um, okay, so this is a guess, uh, but in many applications it's a very lousy guess because many signals you do not expect the four, other Fourier coefficients that you don't measure to be zero. You expect them to be pretty much just as large as the ones that you're measuring. Um, so just to give you an example uh, of how this kind of thing fails, um, give you an, show you an image. Okay, so uh, over here, um, this is a standard image in, in, uh, in, in image processing. It's, it's called the Logan Ship Phantom. Um, it's, uh, it's just a, a, a standard image that, that you use to benchmark various uh, image processing techniques. So it's, it's got all kinds of edges and and, uh, and features. Um, so it's a two-dimensional image. It has a two-dimensional Fourier transform. So its, it's, it's Fourier transform um, lives on, on another two-dimensional space, which is over here. And so we, we assume that we, we, we don't measure all the Fourier coefficients. So every pixel on this square would have some Fourier uh, coefficient attached to it. But suppose you, you only take Fourier measurements um, on these vertical lines, uh, so on, on these rays. So on the white lines, you measure the Fourier coefficients. But which is, so you only take about 1% of all the Fourier data. And then in the, in the black regions, you, uh, you, just, you just completely um, don't take any measurements. So this type of model, actually, um, the reason why we take this model is that this is, this is what comes up in um, medical imaging. So um, you may have heard of MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. So um, what happens is that uh, you know, you're, you're a human. You, 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 uh, you, um, we want to find out what's, what's going on inside you. Uh, you have some, maybe some cancer or something, and you get put into this MRI machine, which is this big tube. You lie down, and then there is this, um, uh, there's this um, uh, emitter which emits these neutrons. It passes through you at different. So, the, um, uh, so um, you, should, you should think of this, this image as being like a, a cross section of your body. Okay? Like, so these might be organs or something. Um, and, um, and these neutrons are passing through. So there's an emitter. Uh, which is going at one angle and it's passing magnetized neutrons through, um, um, through your body um, and, and measuring how much, how much it's deflected as it goes through. Um, and what that is essentially doing is it's, it's measuring Fourier coefficients along one ray of, of your um, um, in, in Fourier space. And then you rotate the, um, the emitter and the detector and you may take another set of measurements and that gives you another ray and so on and so forth. And so this, this, um, this type of model of taking partial measurements in, in, this, in this way is um, as a, a rough model, the kind of thing that like, comes up, say, in MRI. Okay. 
I mean, ideally, you would like to take every single Fourier coefficient, but that, that would mean that you have to sit in, in this machine for 100 times longer, and you don't want to do that, right? It, um, it really takes several minutes to, to, to just get uh, these sort of measurements. Um, okay, so if you only take, if you only take these um, Fourier coefficients and then you apply least squares to reconstruct the data, uh, you get something that looks like this. It turns out that all these lines create these, these nasty artifacts, and they, they, these, these artificial straight lines. And this is really a lousy reconstruction. You know, I mean, this, this is not what, what, what this looks like. And, um, and so, in fact, the, uh, the, the MRI people actually had a lot of trouble um, with, um, um, uh, with reconstruction because the, the, you know, if you apply your standard classical textbook least squares method, you get an image which is, which is really quite lousy. You, know, you, you can't see, for example, these fine features. Um, and the only solution was to take more measurements, uh, which will give you a better image, but that means you have to sit longer in this MRI machine. Okay, and it's, uh, okay. so they, they wanted to improve the image recovery so that uh, you could have faster MRIs. The, the, uh, the holy grail, the, the dream that we would like to get, which we're not there yet, is to have MRI which is so fast, you can actually do it in real time and get movies. So um, right now you can only take static shots of your body using MRI. But if you can get movies and see how things are, you know, what you see various organs contract and dilate when you breathe and so forth, that would be, um, very, uh, be a major advance. You could do a lot more medical research using MRI. Okay, so least squares has its problems, that's, that's the point. And the, the reason is, is that there's, there's, there's no reason, I mean, the, the Fourier coefficients of, of, this, of this object are, are, are just, sort of, um, they're just as large in the black regions as they are in the white regions. So making the black region zero is, is not, uh, um, it's, 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 it's not a natural thing to do. Okay. Yeah, and um, another way of, of uh, and so, so what do you do? Let me go back to, maybe to the image. So you, you have to explore the fact that this, this, this image is so special. I mean, so this is, um, this image is, is not like random noise. You see that there's a lot of black here, and then there's, there's a, a lot of places where the image is constant. There's basically only a few pixels where there's something interesting happening, a transition from, from white to black or black to gray. So um, in some sense, this, the signal is very sparse. You know, m most of the coefficients are either zero or constant or very boring. There's only, a few, there's only a few places in this whole image where something interesting is happening. So in some sense, this image is sparse. It has structure. And um, hopefully, you can use that to get a smarter recovery algorithm than just least squares. That's the, uh, uh, that's, that's the uh, starting point for this, this, this is a motivation for the subject. Right, so as a model, um, as a toy model, uh, this is the first model we consider, a very oversimplified model. So uh, we are solving A is equals B. It is underdetermined. We have many fewer measurements. M is very small, N is big. We have many fewer measurements than we need, so at least squares that doesn't work very well. But we assume that our data X is of a special form. It is not arbitrary data, but it is sparse data. Uh, that's called S sparse. Uh, so S is some number between one and N, typically like a thousand, um, and N is like a million. S sparse means that only S of the coefficients are non-zero. So you have this vector of a million data points, but most of them are zero. Okay, only a few are, are, are non-zero. So this is very special data. And because you have special data, you should hope to do better to, uh, to solve this, this, this equation. See, for general data, X is living on this huge, on this huge space, um, uh, and there's, there are many, many choices for X, but if you assume that X is also sparse, then only very few of the points in your possible solution space will be sparse, and so you should be able to, to find um, um, uh, your, your solution much more exactly. So this is now the, the model mathematical problem. Solve A X equals B, underdetermined, but X is sparse. Uh, oops, wrong way. 